Welcome back, Odoers. My name is Jose Ignacio. Now, today I've got a very special lesson for you about the shop floor module. Now, here at Stealthy Wood, we manufacture almost all of our products, and that means we have to deal with a lot of manufacturing orders. Further complicating things is the fact that most manufacturing orders are split into multiple work orders. Now, these are steps that are required to complete each manufacturing order. So, with tons of manufacturing orders that are then further subdivided into multiple work orders, it's easy to see how things can get a bit complicated for our manufacturing employees. Anyways, that's where the brand new shop floor module comes into play. Or maybe I should say it comes into production. The shop floor module organizes Stealthy Woods work orders by their respective work centers in one convenient location. So enough chit chat, let's get right into it. All right, I know you're eager to get a peek at the shop floor module, but first there are a few things that I need to mention. Starting off, you should know that the shop floor is a companion module to the manufacturing app. And this means that you can install shop floor by itself. Instead, you need to install the manufacturing app first, which will automatically install shop floor as well. Now you may be saying to yourself, Jose, I've never seen a shop floor module anywhere on my Odoo database. And I already have the manufacturing app installed. That's not surprising because Shopfloor is a brand new module that's been added in Odoo 16.4 and later versions too, of course. If you're wondering what version of Odoo you're on, it's actually pretty easy to find out. All you have to do is open up the settings application, scroll to the very bottom, and boom, your database version will appear right there. If you're not on version 16.4 or newer, and you'd like to upgrade so that you can take advantage of Shopfloor as well as all of the other cool stuff that we've added, I'm going to link the documentation for how to do so in the video description below. Now, the final thing that I need to mention is that the shop floor module replaces the tablet view functionality. And you found that inside of older versions of Odoo. Now, this means you'll no longer see the tablet view button next to work orders on a manufacturing order. Don't worry, though. The shop floor module still allows you to process work orders. And just like tablet view, you can use shop floor on a tablet or a desktop as well. All right, now that we've got that out of the way, let's jump over to the shop floor module so I can show you how it makes processing work orders as easy as one, two, and three. All right, Odoo, so here we are on the Odoo homepage again. Now, unlike the old tablet view, which could only be accessed from a work order, shop floor is a separate module and thus has its own icon. So I'm just gonna click on the shop floor icon and we're at the shop floor dashboard. Now the dashboard shows us a card for each manufacturing order. By default, we only see MOs that are ready to start according to the search filter that we have up here. If we get rid of that filter, we should see every manufacturing order regardless of status. Let's look at one of our MO cards to see what information it gives us and what it allows us to do. So the header for each card shows the MO number. And then we also see the product as well as the number of units being produced. And as well as the status of the MO. In this case down here in the bottom right, we have a confirmed one. However, that will change to in progress once that we actually start. Now below the header, we actually see the first work order. And that happens to be over here, assembled table. Along with the button that takes us to the work center where these things are gonna be made, which happens to be called assembly line. Now below the current work order, we see a line titled register production. I'm gonna go into more detail about how to use this in the next video, but basically it allows us to record the number of units we produce. And at the very bottom, diverting your attention to this one, you should see a close production button, which allows us to close the MO, you know, once that you complete it. If you see the quality checks button instead, we need to perform one or more quality checks first. Now, once all quality checks are completed, the close production button is revealed. If I click on close production, you'll notice an undo button appears, giving you a few seconds, you know, to just click undo before the MO is closed for good, keeping it open instead. Now to the right of that, we actually see an options button. And when you select it, a pop-up appears. And this window allows us to do a few different things. We can scrap a component if it is found to be unusable for any reason. We can also add a work order or a component. Now these options are useful if an extra work order or a component is needed that was not included in the bill of materials for the product. Finally, I can click Open backend demo to open the full manufacturing order in the manufacturing app. Very cool. All right, let's return to the shop floor app so that I can show you how it handles work centers and work orders. So back on the shop floor dashboard, let's pretend that I'm Steve and I'm working on the assembly line and I only want to see the work orders assigned to my work center. If I want to view all of the ready to start work orders assigned to a specific work center, I can actually click on the work center button on any of these cards and boom. Alternatively, I can actually click on the work centers button up here at the top, like I do with the alternate paint station, and we can go there directly. 
Now, if I want to change which work centers are actually shown up here at the top, all I need to do is actually click on this little plus button, select one, and confirm it out. But for now, I'm going to stay on the assembly line work center just so I can show you a work order card. Now, much like an MO card, each work order card shows us the MO number, as well as the product and the number of units being produced like we have right there. If work has not yet started on the work order, the card will actually be tagged with to do over here. Now, once work begins, this tag will be replaced by a timer showing the total amount of time work, like we have up here with 10, 11, and some other numbers. Now, below the header, we actually see each of the steps required to complete the work order. Now, next to that, we may see a button at the bottom of the card. If the work order in question is basically the last work order to be completed for the manufacturing order, the button will read close production. Now, this closes the entire MO, just like when we click the same button on any of our MO cards. So it'll look like that. And instead, we actually see something else. If there are additional work orders to complete before the MO can be completed, the button will instead read mark is done like we have right there, which completes the work order, but not the entire MO. Last of all, we have an options button, just like on an MO card. And once you click it, some of these options you'll notice are slightly different. We still have scrap and add component, which behave as normal, but there are a few additional options we haven't seen yet. So we have move to work center, which is used to transfer the work order to a different work center. This is helpful if the intended work center can't be used for any reason. Maybe your Steve blew something up. We also have suggest a worksheet improvement, which allows us to suggest a change to the instructions shown when processing a work order in case someone like Steve doesn't understand something. And we also have create a quality alert, which allows us to notify a quality control team about quality issues, if any are found. And finally, the block button at the bottom. And this allows us to make the work center unavailable, just in the event that it cannot be used for any reason. All right, we're gonna close out of this just so I could show you one more thing. Now, if you check over here, what is that? Well, that's the operator panel. Now, this panel shows us all the operators signed into the shop floor module. I'm gonna go into more detail about this panel in a later video. So for now, just know that it allows operators to sign into the shop floor module and log the time they spend working on each work order. All right, Odoers. That's it for today. Lucky for you, this is just the first video in our series about the shop floor module. Now coming up, we're gonna learn how to process an MO using shop floor, track the time our employees spend working on work orders and so much more. So stay tuned, go grab a snack and I'll see you soon.